What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, I want to talk a little bit about the question, how much math do you need to learn in order to get into machine learning? A lot of people are wondering about this. How much do I need to have a strong foundation or how important is a strong foundation in mathematics when I want to become a machine learning engineer? Can I become a machine learning engineer without having a strong foundation in math? We're going to answer these questions in this video today. Now, if you like my channel and my content, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to make more videos like this one possible in the future. But now let us get right into it. All right, now before I start yapping, I want to disclose that I myself am definitely not a math genius. Even though I have a fancy whiteboard up here, I would not consider myself to be an expert at math. I'm not very, very good at math. I do think I'm okay or fine or maybe decent at mathematics and I'm definitely practicing but I think my perspective can still be valuable or interesting to you guys because I do freelancing and I do work in the field of machine learning, in the field of data science, which is not the same thing, of course, but uh, somehow interconnected to some degree. And I do think my perspective can offer some value, but of course, I'm happy to be proven wrong or to be, uh, you know, argued with in a comment section down below. If you guys think that some of my takes are not correct or too naive or just incomplete, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm happy to hear new perspectives. So do you need to learn and understand mathematics to become a machine learning engineer? I think it depends on what you mean by machine learning engineer. And I would like to structure my answer into three parts because I think that there are three levels of involvement when it comes to working in the field of machine learning. The first level is what I would refer to as the machine learning or AI user or practitioner. So people that use AI models, people that use machine learning models in their applications, maybe you build SaaS products, maybe you build, uh, you do freelancing using machine learning models. So you pull models from Hugging Face to do OCR, you pull models from Hugging Face to do image generation, image recognition, writing captions for images, something like this it doesn't have to be images, uh, text generation, whatever you're doing, sentiment analysis, or you're using large language models, you're building wrappers around them, you're automating processes, you're building agentic systems where you just combine LLMs and you do some prompting and you do some uh, structured output and fine tuning and all that. If you're just using large language models or other AI models, I would say you fall into this category of the AI user, the machine learning user or practitioner. So if you see yourself in this level and you want to stay at that level, I don't think that you need a lot of math skills. Now, don't get me wrong, mathematical thinking and mathematical reasoning capabilities will always positively impact your career, I would say. So understanding mathematics and having an intuition for mathematical stuff will always benefit you. But I don't think that you need this if you just want to stay at this first level of applying AI and building applications around AI. I think more important skills here would be in general, learn back end front end development, learn software architecture, learn maybe some basic DevOps. I think this is way more important if you're just building applications that involve the usage of machine learning models and AI. So for this level, I don't think that you need to understand or learn a lot of math. Now, the second level is what I would actually refer to as the machine learning engineer. Now we're talking about somebody that uses frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow, JAX, maybe just NumPy, maybe scikit-learn to do traditional machine learning and trains and evaluates models manually, so to say, using these frameworks. So we're not just pulling models from Hugging Face, we're not just pinging APIs, we're not just using LLMs, we're actually defining our models, we're training our models, we're scaling the data, we're doing a lot of pre-processing, we're thinking about stuff like hyperparameter tuning, we're thinking about weight initialization methods, activation functions, number of hidden layers, number of neurons per hidden layers, uh, type of neurons uh, in the hidden layers and so on. So we're thinking about architecture of models. We're thinking about which kernel to use in my support vector machine. And all these decisions that you need to make on this level cannot be really made if you don't understand the models that you're using. You cannot understand what it means to use a certain kernel if you don't understand what a support vector machine is, how the kernel trick works. You cannot understand how to choose the proper activation function or weight initialization method if you don't understand statistical distributions, if you don't understand what it means to break linearity and why certain activation functions are chosen and not others, why certain activation functions make sense in uh, recurrent neural networks, but not so much in, 
in basic feed forward neural networks, you need to understand what you're actually doing behind the scenes. And not every model or algorithm is as simple as linear regression in k-nearest neighbors, where you just have some distance measure or you just have some basic adjustments. Some of the model types or most of the model types, I would say, require at least some level of mathematical skills to understand what they're actually doing. So for this level, I would say that you need to have at least some level of understanding of linear algebra, calculus, multivariable calculus and statistics. If your goal is to become this type of machine learning engineer, learning math should definitely be on your to-do list because otherwise you're just picking hyperparameters, you're guessing, you're experimenting, you're trying to change stuff about the configuration, you're changing the activation functions, the weight initialization methods, the number of neurons, the number of hidden layers and so on. But you don't really know what you're doing, why you're doing it, you're just playing around and hoping to find a better configuration. Maybe it works, you don't know why, maybe you scale the data, maybe you don't scale the data, but you don't really understand why you're doing anything. So I would recommend you definitely brush up on your math skills. But then there's the third level where I think all new ones vanishes. This is what I would call the machine learning expert or the machine learning researcher. So this is you if you want to stay up to date with the state of the art, if you want to read all the latest papers, if you want to implement them, make adjustments. If when something like DeepSeek comes out, you don't just play around with the model, you don't just read through blog posts, you actually read the papers, you read the technical reports, you understand the mathematical details of what is happening, what is the genius behind it, why is it on par with the other reasoning models, why is it so powerful, what exactly happens behind the scenes here. Maybe you also want to innovate, you want to implement a paper, make some adjustments, outperform the benchmarks, you want to see what's possible, you want to be on the edge of the development, you want to be up to date. And if you want to do that, there's no way around math. If you want to read papers in general, if you want to read machine learning papers, I would say it's impossible without having math skills. On the one hand, you want to, of course, understand the concepts to know what they're talking about. But on the other hand, you also just want to be fluent at reading math. You want to look at formulas and understand them, not trying to decode them for hours. Now, I would classify myself currently to be at level two with aspirations to go to level three, but this is not trivial. I studied linear algebra, calculus, multivariable calculus, statistics, and probability theory in university and before that in technical high school, but I still have to read this book to brush up on my math skills just so I don't feel like a complete idiot when reading machine learning papers. All of this requires active learning and continuous practice. So to give my final answer in a nutshell, I think there are three levels of involvement when it comes to machine learning. If all you ever want to do is play around with models, pull models from Hugging Face, work with LLMs, ping APIs, I would say that you don't really need to learn a lot of math. You can benefit from it if you want to, but I don't think it's a necessity. If you are at level two, if you want to actually use things like PyTorch, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn to build, train your own models, to make decisions on hyperparameters, I would say you definitely need to learn some math. And on level three, if you want to stay up to date, read the state of the art papers and go into the technical details of all the new architectures, then you definitely need to be very fluent at math. I don't think in general that you need to go crazy in terms of depth when it comes to machine learning. You don't need to go to very, very advanced calculus or linear algebra. Algebra, I think it's enough to already understand the fundamentals of multivariable calculus, statistics, and to also understand matrix notation and to be good at reading it. But in my opinion, if you hate mathematics, you should not go into machine learning. You should look for another subfield of computer science that maybe suits you more. So that's it for this little video today. I hope I was able to bring some clarity. Let me know if you agree with my stance in the comment section down below. Also, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you want to support this channel, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to make sure I can make more videos like this one in the future for free. Besides that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.